All right. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. We've, we've seen this, and this is, uh, again, the first four books of, of the Bible, but also it's, it's literally the story of Christ, but it is the good news. That's the definition of the gospel. And it is very, very, very good news. Amen. Hebrews says this, and I'll, I'll, I'll break it into a more context as we, we study this morning. For we did not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He is a perfect sacrifice, and he is also the perfect example. And I've said this in time and time again. A lot of us have had really hard lives, and I'm not making uh, a light of that. But Jesus lowers himself to earth. But he doesn't just lower himself to earth. He lowers himself to the lowest of the low. Right? And he does that for a reason. So he can sympathize for us, with us in our weaknesses. He can sympathize with, with the lowest of the low. He can meet everyone right where they're at. And I'll break that down even more as we study and that is extremely bright. I, I was setting this up, and I'm like, that background's pretty, but man, it's, sorry about that if it's distracting. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus um, that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So that's to put it in context. Rome is, is in charge. Caesar Augustus says everybody needs to go to their own hometown to be registered. And this poor little family, we'll see, goes 90, almost 95 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. So they went, everyone went to be registered in his own hometown. So, again, I, I say this every year, but let's talk about it. So I was born in Tyler, Texas. I mean, hey, Mother Francis. Anybody else? My other than my wife and my two kids. Um, uh, we have some Minnesota people, right, who've been more, Rob was born in Minnesota. Anybody else? How, where, where were they born? Virginia? Okay, that's cool. Washington. All right, very cool. So glad y'all made it to Texas. We're, we're, Barbara was born in Detroit. Okay, all right. So you would go to your own place, what, Pennsylvania? Right? To your, to your own place to be registered with your lineage and with your hometown. So Joseph went, also went up from the town of, of Nazareth to Galilee, and Galilee to Judah, the city of David, uh, which was called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and the family line of David. And again, this is to fulfill Scripture, more importantly. Micah says this, okay? The, the child would be born in Bethlehem. That's the sign. So, I, I, again, we, as we study this, and you know that to be true, so why would God choose somebody from Nazareth to have a child in Bethlehem out of, like, what, what, why couldn't she, why couldn't they just go get somebody from Bethlehem? Why, why couldn't there be a little lady there that would, that would be able to fulfill scripture. Why would they, he choose Mary, this young teenage girl, to be the mother of his child 95 miles away? And 95 miles in those days is not like 95 miles today. It was a long journey. But it, it, it's, it's amazing to me, and it speaks to God will put the people where they need to be when they need to be there. God chose Mary for this job, for this, for this wonderful task, to go and be the mother of his son and their son, right? And he, he took her 95 miles to a place to fulfill Scripture and that speaks to me is God can put you where he needs to put you when he needs to put you there. And we have to be willing and obedient 
vessels. God will do what he's got to do when he's got to do it to make Scripture line up. And he had Mary lined out. And how do you know this is predestined this way, right? Revelation says this, For the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth, Jesus is going to be crucified. He came to earth to be our sacrifice. We know that. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful uh, providential hand of God to know that he is in control of everything. And he called this out. He said, this young lady is going to go from here to there to fulfill Scripture. Don't think that God can't do what he wants to do in your life. But sometimes it takes some obedience on your part. It takes some surrendering on your part. To say, okay, I, got, I, I hear you, God. And so they went. And while they were there, it came time for her to give birth. And, and I want to study these couple of scriptures here. And this is in your bulletin. She gave birth to her firstborn son, capital S there. That is authority. That is also the son of God. She wrapped him, capital H there, snugly, uh, snugly in clothes and laid him in a feed trough. You guys know the, old, uh, the King James Version. Firstborn child wrapped him in swaddling clothes and lie, laid him in a manger, right? Because there was no room for them in the lodging place or the inn, all right? So we just seen God himself orchestrate this journey of these teenagers to go 95 miles, to go from, from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And you mean to tell me that he couldn't provide a room? Right? It's like, we, we get blessed in so many ways. We got blessed uh, yesterday. We had a, we were shopping for this Christmas present, this gift, and, you know, we don't have it. It's out of stock. We don't have it. And I'm like, no, you need to have it, please. I guess it's getting close to Christmas. We need to have it. And we go to one place, and they say, no, no, we don't have it. And then this lady says, wait a minute. There's one more that somebody didn't get. And I'm like, that's just God. That's just God. And we gave a high five to each other to the sales clerk who I'd never met. I'm like, that's God. He's like, yeah, that is God, isn't it? I'm like, that's God. He always makes a way. He, he makes this thing happen. Every, I mean, we are blessed beyond measure. And he, he always orchestrates it perfectly. And yet, there's no room for his son at the end. Like, we hear that, right? Remember that, that, that uh, Duck Dynasty where they do that, that? There's a whole series of it where it's Christmas time and Je Jace has to say that line or what Jeb has to There's no room for you here, right? And it said, how in the world have you ever thought about it? It's like, God is so good at orchestrating everything. And he's not going to book them a room. It's because as we studied in Hebrew, that he can't sympathize. So, he, he, so he, he, he lives this life so he can sympathize with everybody. He has to go to the barn out back. Really, theologically, it's not correct. He was actually born in a birth cave, which is still very, very traveled and, and um, touristy today. But for all intents and purposes, it was a barn. And they're going to put our Savior in a feed trough. Not a bed. Not a comfortable place. Not a clean place. Not a sanitary place. We're going to put the Savior of the world with feed and manure. We, we went to a nativity scene last night. And the people we were with were like, yeah, whew, that's a live nativity scene. It's a stench there. It's stunk. And that, that's where our Savior is. 
It just, you know, we, we hear this story, we hear it all the time, but I want us to kind of to put yourself there in the, in, the, in the amazing happening that is, right? This teenage girl who conceives without having relations to God, right? And is pregnant, and then the angel of the Lord comes to, to, to Joseph and says, hey, this is all legit. This is really, really a thing. Like, she is really conceived by, by God. And she's going to have, uh, or she is really ha- has a baby inside of her from God. And you need to be right and do the right thing and, and take her as your wife. Right? It's like, are you, be- are you believing this? And then they're going to travel 95 miles, like heavy pregnant. Heavy pregnant. Some of you guys know, well, half of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you don't want to move, right? You certainly don't want to travel for four days. And then you get there, and there's nobody, there's no room for you, and you got to go to this nasty, filthy place. And that's where you're going to give birth to the Savior of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. It baffles me. Now, I love this story. I love, this is just beautiful to me. In the same region, shepherds were staying out of the fields and were keeping watch uh, at night over their flock. That was custom. That was what they, they did. They were, I think, I think this is a very much a parallel to what Jesus is for us. He's the good shepherd. And then the angel of the Lord stood before them. Imagine there's nothing going on. It's quiet. It's a meadow and it's pretty and peaceful. And then this angel of the Lord stands before you. And then this verse, this the second part of this verse, I've always overlooked. And I don't want to do do that again this morning. I want us to to look at this intently. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. Now we know the Lord to be Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord. This little infant that's just been born. Right? That's just been born. Is in authority over this angel. It's incredible to think about as you see this, this story unfold. This beautiful baby lying in a filthy feed trough is now directing and calling the shots for this angel to stand before the shepherds in a field. And then not only that, his glory, his glory shined and shone around the shepherds. You believe that. It's, it's amazing to see in, in the context. And, and again, we saw that and we just sang Silent Night, right? Radiant beams from God's holy face, right? From, from thine holy face is what it, it says. But this this beautiful picture of not only is this angel in submission to this baby, but he's also the baby in this, in this presence. His glory shines all over the field. It shines around them. I find that breathtaking. You imagine that moment where these shepherds are there and this angel of the Lord appears to them who's under the authority of this infant child. And then not only that, the presence, literally the presence and the, the glory, the Shekinah glory is shining around them. And it gets better. They're terrified, surely, right? What in the world? Who are we? But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news, the gospel. The gospel of great joy that will be for all the people. Be for all the people. And he says, Today a Savior a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord, was born to you in the city of David. A Savior. Not just a, not just a good friend. Not just a life coach. Not just one that we can lean on for direction every now and again in raising our kids. 
right? But the Savior. The one that makes us from, from death to life was born in the city of David. And there will be a sign for you, right? You will find a baby wrapped snugly in, in cloth and lying in a feed trough. That's the sign you'll see. And again, suddenly there was a, a multitude as this happens. As they say these words, suddenly there's a multitude of angels, uh, of heavenly hosts, which is angels, right? And praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven. That's the, that's the heaven where God himself is. There's, there's three heavens, as it were. There's the third heaven where, where God himself reigns, where Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, right? And, and it's just this beautiful place. Like, we need to understand that this is not just some storybook. This is a real thing that took place. We even have the date, right? Augustus, uh, Caesar Augustus had this decree set out, right? Why Quirinius was the governor. That's the time, that's exactly when this happened. It wasn't not just some mythical thing that took place. It's dated. It's, 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 it's legit. It really happened. And he says, as these, these angels... Are, are, are opening up the skies, heavening up, uh, are opening up, and these, these angels and these heavenly hosts are, are singing glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth to the people he favors. And that whole thing right there, I could go on a tangent about peace on earth to the people he favors. I don't think that we live in his peace the way we're supposed to or the way he has intended us to. But that moment, can you imagine? Right? Legion. Remember Legion and, and the teachings of Matthew and, and Luke where this, this is demon that was possessed. And again, these demons come from fallen angels from Satan himself. And, and right? And they're going to and fro, right? And, and they, they grab a hold of this young man uh, in a cemetery. His name is Legion. Right? For we are many believed to have had thousands of, of, of demons inside of this young man. And yet God delivers him and he goes into the pigs. You all know the story, right? That's, that's one instance. I, I, I want to just kind of ask you the question, how many angels do you think were at that moment? I honestly believe it would have been like the stars in the sky. I honestly believe it would have been so magnificent. It's so big and so beautiful. Can you imagine? We have a wonderful band and a wonderful choir, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. But on that day, can you imagine the beauty and the sound, right? Uh, uh, Kip, Mr. Brewer, right, what makes wonderful music with the kids and he teaches them. But can you imagine that sound where the angels are singing in choir, right? There's no sour note. There's no auto-tunes. It's just beauty. I, I, I find that moment in Scripture to be probably one of the most breathtaking moments that you can ever read about. And this is, this is kind, of, kind of weird, but when the angels left them, they returned, and they returned to heaven, right? The third heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Why did he, like, there's no discussion of why did he tell us? Why are we the ones that received this great news and had this experience? There, there's nothing like that. But this is what they do. They hurry off, and they found both Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the feed trough of the manger, right? That's the sign. They saw it just the way that... That, that, that the angels described it. And there's nothing else there which blows me away. There's no description of what they saw like, and how it impacted them, right? It says, well, this is what the sign was, and they saw the sign, but there's no detail. And it bothers me. But I, I want, I think Luke, the doctor, had a specific reason for writing this. And it's just as the shepherds are seeing this, they're like, okay, this happened, now go tell everybody. 
go tell everybody what happened. Right? So they see Jesus in the manger. They, they, all the signs were there. And after they saw, they saw him, they reported the message that they had told about the child. Just, they went, just went and, and told. And all who heard it were amazed. Right? They were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. Last couple of verses of the morning, he says, this moment here, but Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditated on them. It's amazing. And I, I do believe this is something supernatural happening too. I think this young teenage girl that just conceived a child from God himself was holding this this baby in her arms and probably thinking and asking the question, how in the world did I get here? How in the world did this happen? Angel of the Lord shows me. I have doubts. I have questions. But it happens just the way they said it was going to happen. And, and I wonder if, like, the, the, the shepherds were reporting what they had saw in the field to them. Doesn't doesn't say that, but you know, just inquiring minds want to know. But it's just also this idea, and I think this is where supernaturally comes in. She's looking at the eyes of the Savior of the world. Somebody answer that. Um, but it's it says you're looking at the Savior of the world, and you're you're looking. Can you imagine? It's like this is the one. Everybody got it? There we go. This is, this is the one that is going to not only save me from, from sure death, but this is the one that's going to save everyone. And God entrusted me to raise him, to, to nurture him. Like, I, I, I think supernaturally there... Right, we sing that song, Mary, Did You Know? And, and it, it, I, don't, I think it, it just doesn't do justice to, to that, this scripture. Meditating on the things that she's seen to fulfill scripture, to make all these things happen, right? And to have these people come and speak to her, right? And just all of the, the amazement. She meditated on them. She, she treasured them in her heart. I think a lot of us, you know, certainly with as parents, we, we treasure our children and, and, and their, who they are and their personalities and, their, and, you know, the memories that we have. And that, that's also special, right? That's just time of year. That's, we kind of reflect on that as we get to see them again at Christmas time, hopefully. But I, I think it even pales in comparison to what she gets to see when she's holding that baby. I, I, I tell my son all the time, my oldest son, who's a junior, that you need to live in the moment because the moment is here and then it's gone. Right? And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you need to take, like it's basketball right now, it's like, you need to take every game like it's your last one. Because one day it will be. There's one day that you can't put that jersey back on once you take it off. Right? And you need to, to, to live your life and play your, play your game in, in that manner of like, this, this may be my last one. That's that cherishing stuff that we need to take more priority and we need to take more focus. And I think this time of year, I think we need to do that at Christmas time with our family, right? Because we just learned last week that, that two families in this church, in this community, are hurting because church, Christmas is just going to be different. We're not guaranteed, right? So that treasuring should, should matter. I'm not trying to be heavy-handed or trying to, to say anything that make you think one way or the other, but I just, I think we as a people need to be um, 
more sensitive to that and cherish those moments and memories. The last verse of the morning, what do you guys can come on up and we'll finish. The shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all they have seen and heard, just as they've been told. And, and it's one of those scriptures as we end it, and you're like, yeah, it's a good way to end it. But I, I ask you this question. You shepherds returned to glorify and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just they had been told. You know, I'm the under-shepherd of this church. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I love you guys and y'all are you know, friends, and, and we get to um, live life together. And some of you guys come with me, uh, with, come at me with some hard life decisions and things like that. And we try to guide and shepherd and do that. But I will, I will make this point to you. Men of God, men of God, you are shepherds of your home. You are the shepherds of your home. That's what you're entrusted with. That's what God's blessed you with. Just like, as we talked about, Mary holding Jesus and like God's going to entrust me to, to raise this child up and nurture it and, and be a blessing for it. You're a shepherd of God's gifts too. You're a shepherd of what God's entrusted you with. And I don't think this is just the last verse of saying, well, these shepherds, they went back and they did their thing and they praised God and they, they glorified Him. I think this is what we should be doing. I, I don't glorify God enough. I certainly don't praise God enough. For all they had seen and heard. Guys, some of you guys know so much scripture. And you've seen the providential hand of God provide in ways that you can only just say, that's God. Some of you guys have seen things like stage four cancer be healed and them walking around today because of their healing. Got that one? And he continues, he says, just as they had been told, I ask you the question this morning, what is God talking to you about this morning, this Christmas season? Because it's no different. This is, if we want to get real real honest, this is the Great Commission. This lined up in the last verse of this, this wonderful story of the birth of Christ. This is go and tell, right? Go tell it on the mountain, as we sing. Of what Jesus has done in your life, what you've seen and what you've heard, and what you've been told. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time of year. Lord, we pray over this, this family, Lord, that you, Lord, touch them and, and are, are with them, Lord, this season. Lord, we know that their families are hurting. We pray for comfort for them this season. God, that as we study the text this morning, God, how you orchestrate and make everything, Lord, line up with Scripture and line up for your, your purpose. And, Lord, you can choose anybody. You can choose anybody as you, we've studied, but you, you chose Mary. And Lord, as we studied this morning, we all have a, a purpose and we all have a plan and we all have a, a job and a, 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 a thing that we should be doing for your kingdom cause. And God, I pray that you show us that more and more every day. Everybody that's a father should be shepherding their family. Everybody that's a mother should be just as Mary, treasuring up these moments and, 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 and loving their, their family like only a mother can love or their family. We all have this wonderful, lined up um, uh, way of life that you have orchestrated each one of us to be doing. And God, I pray that this season, Lord, we can, we can take time and focus on these things. God, we give you glory for today. We give you glory for this season. Bring us back next week for candlelight communion. Lord, 
and this wonderful Christmas. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen.